Hello YouTube, today I will be showing you how to do the annoying orange effect in Final Cut Pro. So, um, the reason I'm doing this is because so many people do this the wrong way. Well, there's no really right or wrong way, but this is the way that Danebow does it. So, I have a picture of an orange down here, got it off of Google Images, and the mouth and eyes are separate, shot. I just, separate shots. I just want to get that out right away. So I drag drag my mouse footage whoops, on top of the orange. As you can see, there's my mouth. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to Effects, Video Filters, Matte, Mask Shape, and drag it into your mouth. Then you go to Filters, oops, and you switch it to Rectangle, or an Oval, sorry move it to where about you want to be and you're always going to want your mouth your vertical scale sorry to be a little bit bigger than it needs to be because well right now this should be about good because my mouth is open but if you looking at a shot where your mouth is closed when your mouth opens it's going to go outside of the oval and you don't want that to happen so you go after you do that go to mask feather put it in and you go to your filters and bring the feather up so it gives a nice smooth look and I always bring it to around 60 then you go to motion scale it down not quite so small well of course you can you can do this any way you you want really I mean this is all about personal taste how you want how big you want everything alright so after I have that you go to color correction and you go grab your color corrector drag it in double click on that go to your color corrector and you slide your little thing to about where orange is and as you can see I've pretty much matched the color so I am think I'm just gonna leave it the way it is right there now after I have my mouth done go to your eye oops and you drag that right on top and you want to trim that down so it's nice and even. So now you're going to do the exact same thing that you just did with your mouth to the eye. And you go to mask shape. Shouldn't have to explain most of this. Although the eye does not move at all. So as long another important thing keep your shot still so then you don't have to do a lot of annoying keyframing but your eye really does not move so you can just leave that you don't have to make it any bigger drag your mask feather onto this and you go to your filters bring up the softness to about again 60 I would say go to your motion scale drag it down to about there I guess it's gonna seem like you have room for the other eye but you really won't so always just go a little bit smaller than what you think is necessary go back to color correction bring in your color corrector color corrector and you get it to about where you want to be you can tell that this shot is a lot darker than the other shot and it kinda looks out of place so you're gonna drag all these little things up so it, it matches about where you want it to be that is a little too far I'm gonna put a little more orange in oops and I'm gonna take the saturation up just a touch this is just all getting it to match now I matched it pretty nice now so after you have that you have one eye and so you don't have to do all that annoying stuff again you can just copy and paste and drag it onto the clip on top so now you have two eyes almost all you have to do is move your second eye because it right now it's on exactly in the same spot as the other and that's about all you have to do left now Whoops. 
Now my eyes are looking a little big. Like I said, they are always gonna look too big on your first try. On your, they're always gonna be too big. So just bring them down a little bit. And that's looking about good. But one of the things there's a kind of a problem. There's right now this is the way that Danebo does it. So if you want to leave it this way, that's that's fine. But you notice that those little pink things in the corner of your eyes. They're supposed to be in close to your nose, where your nose would be anyway. So if you want to, which, I mean, then again, this is optional. You got to be careful with this, but you can just go to perspective bin and put f drag flop onto your second eyeball. If you, well, whatever, depending on what eye you recorded, then you can go to whoops. go to motion and rotate it a little bit because needs to be fixed a little there but now there's one there's a couple problems with this this you gotta be careful how you do this because if you duplicate it like I just did now you wanna keep your eyes relatively still because if you look if this eye looks this way this eye's gonna look this way and that's not humanely possible but then again it's all personal stuff. So, I'm gonna, this is what the final shot's looking like. As you can see, that's what I'm talking about with the uh, cross eyes and the reverse cross eye stuff. Just a second. Yeah, that's what I mean right there. That will happen <laughs> a lot. I mean, I guess if you wanted to look that look like like that, but so I'm going to render this up real quick. And I'll be back in a minute to show you what it looks like. Here we are again. I saved this as a quick time movie, but here is the final shot. This is how you do the annoying orange effect the right way. And that's really all it looks like, but you can make some pretty cool videos with this. Um, if you have any questions, just post them below. Uh, thanks for watching.